welcome everyone in this lecture of quantum mechanics i will discuss about the motion of wave packets this lecture is from the textbook of n jetili in the previous lecture i have already discussed about the basic concept of the wave packets and the mathematical preliminaries behind the wave packets and in this lecture i will mainly discuss the propagation of a wave packet without distortion and the concept about the group velocity and the phase velocity now how do wave packets evolve in time that is how the structure of the wave packet change with respect to the time this idea is really very important because it gives an idea not only about the motion of a quantum particle in space but also about the connection between the classical mechanics and the quantum mechanics that is why the time evolution of the wave packet is really important besides studying how wave packets propagate in space we will also examine the conditions under which packets may or may not spread thus to study the spreading of the wave packet it is necessary that how the mathematical form of the wave packet change with respect to time we will discuss the spreading of the wave packet step by step in this lecture basically we are going to discuss the propagation of a wave packet without distortion and in the next lecture we will discuss about the propagation of a wave packet with distortion at issue here is knowing the initial wave packet psi 0x or the amplitude phi k how do we find psi xt at any later time t that means how to find the mathematical form of the wave packet psi xt at any later time t that is our main task this issue reduces to calculating the integral integration phi k e to the power i k x omega t d k in 1.94 actually this equation we have already discussed in the previous lecture this integration of phi k e to the power i k x minus omega t d k this is basically the structure of the wave function that is the wave function psi x t that is equal to phi k e to the power i k x minus omega t d k to calculate this integral we need to specify the angular frequency omega and the amplitude phi k we will see that the spreading or non spreading of the packet is dictated by the form of the function omega k so the point is that you see in this equation that is in the equation of the wave packet or the wave function there is a term omega what is omega omega is the angular frequency now this angular frequency may have <coughs> different forms and depending on the form we can say that the wave function either spread or not spread so the spreading of the wave function depends on the function omega k but in this particular lecture we are going to discuss about the wave packet which does not distort with respect to time so this is a very simple case the simplest form of the angular frequency omega is when it is proportional to the wave number k this case corresponds to a non dispersive propagation i am again repeating that when angular frequency omega 
is proportional to the wave number k. This case basically corresponds to the non-dispersive medium. And this is the simple form of the angular frequency omega. But this form may not be in other medium. Basically in dispersive medium, this relation is not valid. So in this particular lecture, we are considering non-dispersive medium and in this case omega is proportional to k. Since the constant of proportionality has the dimension of velocity which we denote by v0. It means that if omega is proportional to k then we can write omega is equal to v0k. So v0 is equal to omega by k and its dimension that is dimension of the constant v0 is the dimension of the velocity. So the constant is basically in the velocity. So omega is equal to v0k. Now if I write omega is equal to v0k then the mathematical form of the wave packet which we can write from the equation 1.94. I can again show you the equation 1.94. Let us check that what was the form of the wave packet. This portion was discussed in earlier lecture. This is equation 1.94. So let us check it again. Psi xt, this is the wave function or wave packet. Psi xt is equal to 1 by root 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity phi k e to the power i k x minus omega t dk. This is the mathematical form of the wave function or wave packet. You see there is a term omega and we have already discussed that as omega is proportional to k that is why we can write omega is equal to v0k. So we will substitute the value v0k here and rewrite the equation. So we will get a new form of the new form of the wave function psi xt. So let us check that equation. So after putting the value omega is equal to v0k in the equation 1.94, the new form of the wave packet will become like this psi xt is equal to 1 by root 2 pi minus infinity 2 plus infinity phi k e to the power i k x minus v0 t into dk. So this is the new form of the wave packet which we can deduce from equation 1.94. Now the point is that if you look very carefully this equation then we can conclude that this relation has the same structure as equation 1.95. So what was equation 1.95? In equation 1.95, we assume that the time t is equal to 0. And let us check it again. That is, in equation 1.95, we assume the initial time t is equal to 0. So, if we put the initial time t is equal to 0, then the new equation will be psi 0 x. We are writing psi 0 x instead of psi x t. Because here t is equal to 0, that is why we are writing psi x comma 0 or psi 0 x. So psi 0 x is equal to 1 by root 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity phi k e to the power i k x into dk. So you see the exponential factor very carefully. In the exponential factor that is e to the power i k into x. So in x the i k is multiplied. So this factor you check very carefully because the new form of the wave function is similar to this equation that is equation 1.95. So the exponential factor is i k x.
and And in the equation 1.115, the exponential factor is e to the power i k into x minus v zero t. So, what is the difference between uh, the equation 1.95 and the equation 1.115? Here, a factor v zero t is deducted from x. So, in equation 1.95. There was only i k x, but here i k x minus v zero t. So this exponential factor is almost same. That is why this this equation, that is equation 1.115, can be written in terms of psi zero x, and we will use psi zero x minus v zero t because in equation 1.95. In the left hand side, there was psi zero x only. So if we write x minus v zero t in place of x, then in right side I can write that is i k x minus v zero t. So this psi x t here, that is in equation 1.115, this psi x t is equivalent to psi zero x minus v zero t. So The form of the wave packet at time t is identical with the initial form. This uh, conclusion is very important. I am repeating it again that you see that form of the wave packet at the time t is identical with the initial form. Therefore, when omega is proportional to k, so that omega is equal to v zero k, the wave packet travels to the right with constant velocity v zero and obviously without distortion. Why without distortion? Because the form of the wave packet at time t, that is psi x comma t, is equal to psi zero x minus v zero t. That is. The form of the wave packet at the time t is identical with the initial form. So, from this equation, that is from equation 1.115, we can say that the wave packet propagates without distortion. However, since we are interested in wave packets that describe particles, we need to consider the more general case of dispersive media which transmit harmonic waves of different frequencies at different velocity we know that if the medium is a dispersive medium in case of dispersive medium what happens that if some wave is propagated then harmonic waves of different frequencies will travel at different velocities actually velocity Will depend on the frequency of the waves. Velocity of the waves will be different if the frequency of the waves are different. So, velocity of the waves propagating through the dispersive media will depend on the frequencies of the waves. This means that omega is a function of k because k corresponds to frequency k is related to the frequency so we can say that in case of dispersive media omega that is angular frequency is a function of k omega is equal to omega k the form of omega k is determined by the requirement that the wave packet psi xt describe the particle now how will be the form of omega k the form of omega k is determined by the requirement that the wave packet psi xt describes the particle that is we have to write the form of omega k in such a way that ultimately psi xt that should describe the particle that means that should describe 
the matter wave assuming that the amplitude phi k peaks at k is equal to k0 this uh, fact we have discussed in our earlier lecture and we show a graph that amplitude phi k peaks at the position k is equal to k0 while the psi xt peaks at at the position x is equal to 0 now as the amplitude phi k peaks at k is equal to k0 then phi k we can write phi k as g of k minus k0 and phi k is equal to g of k minus k0 is appreciably different from 0 only in a narrow range delta k is equal to k minus k0 so phi k is different from 0 in a narrow range that is delta k is equal to k minus k0 and we can tailor expand omega k about the point k0 now if we tailor expand omega k about the point k0 so how will be the expansion this is the expansion tailor expansion omega k is equal to omega k0 plus k minus k0 d omega by dk plus half k minus k0 whole square d square omega by dk square at the point k is equal to k0 and so on this is the Taylor expansion so the omega k is equal to omega k0 this is the first term plus k minus k0 we are writing d omega by dk as vg i will make you clear later that is what is the meaning of vg but right now d omega by dk i am writing as vg then half k minus k0 whole square into uh, sorry half d square omega by dk square that we are writing as alpha so the third term is k minus k0 whole square into alpha what is alpha alpha means half of d square omega by dk square that is alpha so this is equation 1.117 and this equation describes the Taylor expansion of omega k. Now as uh, I told that is vg is equal to d omega by dk and alpha is equal to half d square omega by dk square. Now to determine psi xt we need simply to substitute 1.117 into 1.94 that is to determine the new form of psi xt when we are considering a dispersive medium then in this particular medium what will be the new form of the wave function so to determine the new form of the wave function what we have to do we have to substitute this value of omega in the parent equation i have already shown you the equation 1.94 that is the structure of the wave packet basic mathematical structure of the wave packet in that equation what we have to do there is a term omega there so we have to replace omega in terms of this expanded that is expanded form of omega we have to substitute the value of omega with the right hand side of equation 1.117 so after substituting the value of omega in that equation and one more thing we will write phi k that is we will write g k minus k 0 instead of phi k then we will obtain equation 1.118 actually you have to do some algebraic manipulation there so after some algebraic rearrangement we will obtain the equation psi x this is very easy here the exponential factor has been uh, separately written in multiplied form that is for example e to the power i k minus k0 x minus vgt into e to the power minus i k minus k0 whole square alpha t plus dot 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 here so here in the left hand side there is a multiplied form e to the power i k0 x minus v p h into t so we have obtained this new form in equation 1.118 after some algebraic rearrangement so this is the new form of the wave function in dispersive medium and here we have already uh, shown that 
VG, that is, there is a term VG. You see that there is a term VG. So, what is VG? VG is equal to d omega by dk. And in the, that is, uh, here, v, there is a term VPH. So, what is VPH? VPH is equal to omega by k. But here, this VPH is actually omega k0 by k0. When you will do the algebraic rearrangement, then you will see that this VPH is actually omega k0 divided by k0. So, this is the form of the wave function. And what is the meaning of VG uh, and VPH? VPH and VG are respectively the phase velocity and the group velocity. The suffix G is for the group and here the suffix P is for the phase. So, VG is the group velocity and VPH is the phase velocity. The phase velocity denotes the velocity of propagation for the phase of a single harmonic wave e to the power i k0 x minus v p h into t. You see that uh, just outside the integrand there is a exponential factor e to the power i k0 x minus v p h into t. Actually, the phase velocity denotes the velocity of propagation for the phase of a single harmonic wave. You see the uh, term single harmonic wave. So, phase velocity denotes the propagation of the single harmonic wave e to the power i k 0 x minus v p h t. This single harmonic wave is propagating with the velocity v p h. And the group velocity represents the velocity of motion for the group of waves that make up the packet. In our earlier lecture, we already discussed that the wave packet has been formed by superposing a large number of waves or the group of waves. So, the group velocity basically represents the velocity of motion for the group of waves that make up the packet. So, one should not confuse the phase velocity and the group velocity. In general, they are different. Only when omega is proportional to k, in that case, they will be equal. Because you see in equation 1.119, vg is equal to d omega by dk. So, if omega is proportional to k, then omega by k and d omega by dk will have the same meaning. So, in that case only, vg and vph will be same. But in other cases, group velocity and phase velocity will be different. Next, we will discuss the meaning of group velocity and phase velocity more clearly. As mentioned in the earlier paragraph, when we superimpose many waves of different amplitudes and frequencies, we can obtain wave, wave packet or pulse. This fact we have discussed many times, that is, if we superpose large number of waves which have different amplitudes and frequencies, we can construct a wave packet. We have already discussed the mathematical form of this wave packet. So, the, this wave packet or a pulse, we can also call the wave packet a pulse. This pulse travels with the group velocity Vg. And the individual waves that constitute the packet, however, move with different speeds. Each wave moves with its own phase velocity Vph. So, the individual waves that are moving with different speeds, each wave will move with its own phase velocity Vph. Now, this will be shown in a figure. You see this figure. Here, real part of psi xt has been plotted along the y-axis and this has been plotted with respect to x. The function real part of psi xt of the wave packet, this corresponds to equation 1.018 that is the new form of the wave packet which we have considered in case of dispersive medium. So, this psi xt actually belongs 
to this equation. This is the right hand side of this equation. Mathematical form of the psi xt is the right hand side. Now, this has been plotted with respect to x. Now, the solid curve, you see that there is a solid curve, oscillating solid curve that is contained in a dashed curve envelope. So, this dashed one, we can call it a envelope. So, this is actually the packet. This is the envelope and this envelope, you see that this envelope is propagating with respect to the loop velocity Vg. That is, after the superposition, we are getting a packet or a pulse. That packet or that pulse is propagating with, with a velocity Vg. That we are saying that this is the group velocity. And this pulse or the packet is moving along the x-axis. The individual waves, which has not drawn here, that is inside the packet, there is many individual waves. And that actually, that addition of those waves and that make the solid curve moves with the different phase velocity VPH. That is the individual waves which add up to make the solid curve move with different phase velocities VPH. However, individual waves are not shown here. The solid curve that is showing here, if we add the individual wave, then we can get a solid curve like this. That is after the interference, we can say that these waves are interfering. So, after in, uh, this solid curve actually denotes the interference pattern. So, this solid curve move with different phase velocity VPH that we are denoting here, that is VPH. So, individual waves are moving with different phase velocity. That is, we are saying that is uh, VPH and the wave packet or pulse that is moving with a velocity that is called group velocity. The group velocity represents the velocity with which the wave packet propagates as a whole. So, wave packet propagates as a whole where the individual waves which are located inside the envelope that add up to make the packet move with different phase velocities. The wave packet has an appreciable magnitude only over a small region and falls rapidly outside the region. This is clear from, from this figure that this packet, this packet, this is the maximum of this packet and outside that is uh, this region, the amplitude of the packet falls. So, we are saying in this way that is the wave packet has an appreciable magnitude only over a small, small region and falls rapidly outside that region. The difference between the group velocity and the phase velocity can be understood quantitatively by deriving a relationship between them. We know that omega is equal to k into vp as vp is equal to omega by k. So, we are writing omega is equal to k into vp. Now, uh, if we differentiate omega with respect to k, so d omega by dk is equal to vph plus k into d vph by dk. Now, how we can get the value of d vph by dk? Since k is equal to 2 pi by lambda, we know that. So, d vph by dk that is equal to, we are writing in this fashion, that is d vph by d lambda into d lambda by dk that is equal to minus 2 pi by k square d vph by d lambda or k into d vph by dk is equal to minus lambda into d vph by d lambda. So, after making this differentiation, we can write this equation that is d omega by dk is equal to vph plus k into d vph by dk. We can write this relation in this way that is Vg is equal to d omega by dk is equal to vph plus k into d vph by dk is equal to this one that is vph minus lambda into d vph by d lambda. So, basically what uh, we have done, uh, we have written the relation of Vg and vph 
in terms of the dependence of VPH on lambda. You see that in this equation 1.120, there is a term d VPH by d lambda. So the relation between VG and VPH will be governed by this particular term d VPH by d lambda. This equation can also be written after some algebraic element, uh, rearrangement that is Vj is equal to Vph plus P into dVph by dp. Because we know that K is equal to P by H cut and similarly we can uh, proceed. That is we have to calculate the dVph by dk in terms of the relation of Vph with momentum. And we can show that this can be written that is K into dVph by dk is equal to P into dVph by dp. Now, in equation 1.121, the relation of Vg and Vph is governed by the uh, dependence of Vph on the momentum. Now, these two equations, equation 1.120 and 1.121 show that the group velocity may be larger or smaller than the phase velocity. It may also be equal to the phase velocity depending on the medium. If the phase velocity does not depend on the wavelength, that is, d vph by d lambda is equal to 0. This occurs in non-dispersive media. In that case, the group and phase velocities will be equal. So, in case of non-dispersive media, d vph is independent of lambda. Phase velocity does not depend on lambda. So, the second term is 0 and group velocity and phase velocity is equal. But if vph depends on the wavelength, this occurs in the dispersive media, then d vph by d lambda is not equal to 0. Hence, the group velocity may be smaller or larger than the phase velocity. It depends on the type of medium. An example of a non-dispersive medium is an inextensible string. We would expect in that case that is group velocity is equal to the phase velocity. So, in case of inextensible string, group velocity and phase velocity are equal. Water waves offer a typical dispersive medium. So, in case of dispersive medium, group velocity and phase velocities will not be equal. And we can show in case of water, Vg is almost half of Vph. Now, the relation between uh, group velocity and phase velocity can be expressed in other way also. For this case, we consider the case of a particle traveling in a constant potential V. Its total energy is E is equal to P square by 2m plus V. Now, since the corpuscular feature that is energy and momentum of a particle are connected to its wave characteristic, that is energy and momentum, they are connected to the wave characteristic. Wave characteristic means that is frequency, wave frequency and wave number. For example, energy E. Energy E is equal to H cut omega. So, energy is connected to the wave character omega in this manner. That is E is equal to H cut omega. And momentum that is connected, connected to the wave number in this way that is P is equal to H cut K. Now, if we use these two relations, then we can express Vg which was d omega by dk. We can write Vg is equal to d e by dp by using these two relations and Vph we can write as E by P. So, these are the two new equations here group velocity and phase velocity has been expressed in terms of energy and momentum. Now, let us consider the equation that is total energy is equal to P square by 2m plus V. Now, we can show that Vg that is group velocity is equal to DDP of total energy. So, P square by 2m plus V that is equal to P by M and that is equal to V. V for the particle that is the velocity of for the particle and phase velocity Vph is equal to 1 by P of total energy that is equal to P by 2m plus V by P. Now, the group velocity of the wave packet is thus equal to the classical velocity of the particle that is the first equation suggests that the group velocity of the wave packet is equal to the classical velocity of the particle. This is very important conclusion. So, Vg is equal to V particle. This suggests we should view the center of the wave packet as traveling like a classical particle that obey the laws of classical mechanics. The center would then follow the classical trajectory of the particle.
now we have already told that wave packet or pulse that is basically the matter wave we know that a particle has dual character particle like character and wave like character now how to describe the wave like character that wave like character can be expressed in terms of the matter wave but what will be the form of the matter wave the form of the matter wave can be deduced by superposing a large number of waves so mathematical structure of that wave packet we have already discussed so that wave packet that wave packet that represents that classical particle and wave packet moves with the speed of the group velocity we have already discussed that and that group velocity is equal to the particle velocity that is classical velocity of the particle so we can say that center of the wave packet as traveling like a classical particle that obeys the laws of classical mechanics the center root then follow the classical trajectory of the particle we now see that how the wave packet concept offers a clear connection between the classical description of a particle and its quantum mechanical description so there is a connection between the quantum mechanics as well as classical mechanics by the concept of the wave packet in the case of a free particle an insertion of capital v is equal to 0 yields from equation 1.123 that is vg is equal to p by m if we put v is equal to 0 and vpa is equal to p by 2m is equal to half of vg this shows that while the group velocity of the wave packet corresponding to a free particle is equal to the particle's velocity p by m if we put v is equal to 0 then we can say still that is vg is equal to p by m that is the velocity of the particle however the phase velocity is half the group velocity the expression vp is equal to half vg this is meaningless it has no meaning for it states that the wave function travels at half the speed of the particle it is intended to represent this is unphysical indeed the phase velocity has in general no meaningful physical significance however the group velocity has a meaningful representation so the concept of group velocity or the concept of wave packet that connects the classical mechanics to the quantum mechanics so this is the end of the lecture i request the viewers to read the book of in detail for clear understanding of the concept of the wave packet and i thank you all for listening this lecture